गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन माई नेम इज़ रोहित अग्रवाल एंड आई हैव रिसेंटली जॉइन गी की एंड दिस ऑगस्ट आई एम वर्किंग एज अ सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर थ्री ओवर ईयर सो टूडे आई एल बी टेकिंग ऑन द टॉपिक विच इज़ सर्वर पॉड सो दर इज़ अनदर बैक एंड सोल्यूशन विच इज़ अवेलेबल इन डार्ट सो आई वॉज वर्किंग ऑन द प्रोजेक्ट एंड देर वी गॉट टू फाइंड आउट सम सोल्यूशन इन बैक एंड यूजिंग डार्ट सो दिस वॉज वन सर्वर पॉड विच इज़ एक्चुअली अ वेरी गुड बैक एंड सोल्यूशन विच आई गॉट टू नो एंड इट्स ऑल्सो अ स्केलेबल सोल्यूशन okay moving ahead to some introduction of this particular platform so this is a open source platform which is available and everyone can contribute me myself have contributed to this platform as well and this is developed by victor who is again a former software engineer at google who was who used to work in the flutter team so nowadays we can develop the front end very easily using flutter through dart but there was no such back end solution which was provided so that we can do the full stack development through dart itself so this is the solution which we got to know about server pod so hence now we can i guess we can switch on to full stack dart development that we say so this is again a very scalable thing and it's a very open source platform which is available going ahead to how we can start or how can we can install server pod in our system so we need to first activate the cli which is available using dart pub, pub global activate server pod cli command and prior to that we need to install docker desktop now why we need to use docker desktop here so server pod itself has some configuration of docker done in there so whenever we create a new project using server pod what it does it also create the containers for the database which is like the supporting database which is having like the postgres and the redis database and we can it gets automatically connected to the database over there so it's like a whole some thing which is available to us the database gets connected very easily it also also can creates the docker containers for us so it's very easy local development that we can do and switching out to the deployment part also it has having the configured systems for aws so we just need to connect with the, with the aws and it will automatically deploy things over there so these are the basic things which you need to do to create a project and then to start the server pod or the project which you have created using the command which is mentioned over here so i will list out some features which is available in server pod and how why it is unique and why we should go with this first thing is the database support i already told that the server pod has this two database support in it's like first is a postgres sql and the second is a redis database so you can see in the right hand side we have a yaml file so for every project that gets created it has a docker config yaml file which is there inside which we can see that these are the two database which is connected so we can comment out whichever database we want and we can just use the single database as well but these are the two database which are currently supported in server pod and they are also connected to it using the docker desktop that we have installed it also has the support of the orm which is there so all the things which are pre installed over here we just need to play with the yaml files and everything gets created on its own the auto generation things is very good that has been done in server pod second is uh, serialization so how we can create the model classes and how we can map those model classes with the database tables so in order to do in any other backend solution we need to create the model files we need to link up the model files with the databases but here what the simple approach is that on the right hand side we can see there is a yaml file again so this yaml file is helpful to create an auto generated code of the model class which which even gets connected to the table products so we i am creating a products class over here which is linked to the table table products in pg sql and thirdly i have mentioned all the fields that i need basically what are the uh, columns which i need to get created in the table also i can mention all the primary keys or the foreign keys or any indexing that i need to do i can also mention everything over here in this yaml file by using the server pod generate command what it does it creates the model class which gets automatically connected to the database also the postgres sql code gets generated uh, gets generated the sql code which we can run on our uh, which can which which we can run on our database server to uh, like create the tables as well so these are the thing which gets automated automatically which we just need to create the yaml file properly we get uh, these orm things so uh, object relation mapping basically which happens so this is a uh, as you can see the right hand side i have created a products mod product model this is auto generated code which got created when i just wrote that small yaml files code so you can see we have all the functions over here whether you want to serialize the object 
whether you want to find any product from the database i want to delete any product i want to update even i want to insert or any any like if i want to get count so all these functions are pre-generatedly created using this orm feature and we don't need to write any single code and just we need to create this particular yaml file and this code just can be created automatically to even to execute like raw sql queries we have all the functions created in this object class now the comes is the pre-generated client so we can see there are three pro three folders that gets created that's demo pod client demo pod flutter demo pod server now what are these so whenever i create any new project using server pod command server pod create project name so i get three folders in it created so one is the server second is the flutter code and third is a client now inside the servers we have all the api endpoints that we are going to create and we are going to use it that interact with the database the flutter demo plot flutter is basically a flutter application which gets created and you and the demo pod client is the client which helps us to connect between this server and flutter so right now if i have uh, for current system if i have an api and i want to integrate that api inside my flutter project i need to use either uh, http or do module and create different http clients or api clients and then we need to paste the base url we need to pass out the parameters and accordingly handle the exceptions all the things are done manually for now but if you use server pod what it does it creates a client class now what we can do we can just use the client class and access the we can just access the apis directly using the functions which has been created into the server class and in the client so basically the client class it gets auto generated it creates a link between the server and the front end application that i am creating so right now we just have this client created for flutter applications but going to the further developments they have said that they will be creating this client for every other project uh, every other frameworks like react or react native or any other things that we use to develop front end applications so we have the creation of the different api clients that we used to do by using do or http it gets er eradicated we can just handle the exceptions directly over the server or we can just handle the exceptions inside the client classes so there's a pre-generated code that we guessed we we get from this particular server pod then we have the caching feature which is which is being provided by server pod so it has some key value based caching systems so we can also maintain the expiry time for cache and also the regular cache there are two types of cache were provided over here one is the regular and the other is the priority so sometimes it happens as it happened in my application so i need to get the categories of the products again and again whenever user is going to the home screen so i do i cannot just iterate over the database again and again so this regular cache was my option so i cache the data over some time limit and i just use the cache for getting my data so these were also very easy functions provided over here instead of server pod and and someone who is already a dart developer or a flutter developer i would say it's very easy for him or her to get hands on with this server pod thing because it has the same architecture or same functionalities what we perform in flutter like using of asynchronous programming or using the object oriented programming language everything remains the same it is just a like a little bit reading of documentation can get someone can get hands on with the back end development so if someone is just trying the front end development can also switch to back end development using this platform then we have the authentication flow which is available like right now if you if you want to have apple sign in or google sign in or any email and password sign in we need to integrate with the firebase thing so we we can just switch over to that we can use a uh, server pod used for authentication with different servers like google apple emails in further development they are also being twitters github or any other other social network sign ins but right now these are the three available which is available to have the sign in framework and it's again developed over here we don't need to depend on firebase for this stuff the this world class logging is also very amazing feature which is provided so what is this world class logging why it's known as world class so for current development if i'm developing a project in any other api framework like node or stuff like that we need to generate logs for all the api like all the api hits that happens so all the logs are stored either in the text files or even we can store them in the database not a problem so but in server pod they have already created the log class in such a way that all the endpoints all the hitting of the endpoints that happen gets stored inside the database in the pg sql and it uh, stores everything like what are the query operations we've done what are the interactions with databases being what are the query parameters what are the body parameters everything are stored properly in the database and even they are providing a ui to check on the logs 
so if some something happens is like i can see that there is exceptional happening over happening over here or any uh, error that took place so we can just click on that particular uh, error and we can just uh, it just takes us back to the code line uh, line of code which the error was where the error was located so we can directly reach out to the code through the clickable error links from log we don't need to search on okay this was the function that happened and we need to go back to our code base search on the function so this saves a lot of time and is like the logging feature is very easy like very good that has been created by them the ui which i am talking about is not launched but they will launch in the version 1 which is coming down in november but the things are ready for them and they are just testing the things as i got to know about through the github road map that they have in the documentation future calls so again future calls are again a, or we can say task scheduling or cron jobs that we run for any other for any function that we want to perform like suppose a new user registered in our system and we want to send a particular email to him so we need to depend on other third party services or even we if we write that particular thing we need to create a proper structure in node js store them inside the database or if you want to persist them in the things whenever the system restarts but this thing is pre built over here in server pod we can just register our future calls inside the uh, server dot dart file or basically the main file where the program starts from and then we can just call the method from wherever we want wherever whichever endpoint we want we can just call the end, we can just call the future and we can just pass on whether if we want to we want to some with some delay or at a particular time passing the date time parameter all the duration parameter it and this calls get stored inside the database so even if my server is getting restarted at a particular time the calls are not lost they will even persist whenever the system is restarted so this is also very amazing feature which has been provided by them we don't need to hassle a lot we just need to register them inside the server pod and we can call that particular function anywhere we want and it will persist even the system when the system is getting restarted or so so coming to the deployment so again they have pre built a deployment codes i will show in my further slides like how the folder structure is getting created so they have a dedicated folder for aws inside which every thing has been already configured like all the scripts that has to be written to deploy this particular application to my terraform part we just need to create a account on aws prepare for terraform and then we can just link all this terraform and my uh, backend application and just using the deploy command server pod deploy we can deploy my our project to terraform so again the deployment has been done in a very easier way for them for us future upgrades or we can say what are the future things that are coming so right now we just have two database support like the pg sql and redis coming forward they will also create a no sql database support that is mongodb secondly we have a built in analytics that are they are going to develop that is all the api and Uh, calls that has been happening, so we can analyze the calls. We can analyze the access of the different endpoints, or even we they are also having web servers in it. So we can even create our own uh, hosted web pages over here in uh, using ServerPod. ServerPod is not just limited to creating uh, APIs, but we can also create a web server where we can host our web pages. So it uh, it provides us two types of server: one for the API, and the second is for the web. So we can even host web pages over here. These are complete different architecture which has been created for the web pages also they will be giving us the ui interface to check out the api logs that has been generated or such stuff okay there are also they will also pre prepare the clients apart from flutter like right now the client which they are providing is just for the flutter application we can access that particular client in only a flutter application but going ahead they will also create different client which you can access in any react react native or view or any other type of applications to make it more scalable uh going forward i will show you a diff my project structure which i created so this is how we get three folders of the server the client and this is the flutter application so this is basically a normal architecture that gets created for a flutter application okay first is the now i will go to the client class so this is again a auto generated class in which you can see this is the client and if we can access this particular client directly in our flutter application okay if i open my flutter application then see we can just access the functions directly using the client so we don't need to use any do or http and http functions which they are, they have already done that inside the client client folder coming to the server the server folder so this is basically containing all the endpoints or the future calls 
or the yaml files that we create so if i create a yaml file of such uh, like for products class like this then we get a particular model that has been created for this flutter car inside this generated folder and for the deployment again they have a dedicated aws folder that we have for configuration of our development servers production servers or testing servers we can have different configurations can be given over here and this gen uh, root generated folder gives us the sql file which we need to create the tables or which we need to uh, maintain the database that has been like that we'll be using and again the server which i talked about the web server we can also create a web server over here we can create different html files like the thing we do in express js we have the views folder so we can also play with the views thing using over here the templates thing so this is a simple the similar thing i am talking about so again you can compare it something with the express thing so this was all from my side